We recently saw a report on the news about hypermiling. So we thought we would start out with the definition of hypermiling, just so you understand and know exactly what we're talking about. Hypermiling is the use of fuel saving techniques such as lower speeds and frequent coasting to maximize a vehicle's fuel mileage. So a second definition of hypermiling is Hypermiling is driving a vehicle, usually a car, with techniques that maximize fuel efficiency. Those who use these techniques are called hypermilers. This is extreme form or a hyper form of energy efficient driving. So the question come to mind, can we hypermile in this? It's about seven tons on wheels, it's moving a house, and most of the time when you think about hypermiling, or after I started looking at it, it was dealing with cars that are shaped better for speed and able to get better gas mileage. So where we're at currently, gas is over $5 a gallon. And when we headed off on this trip back the end of May, 1st of June, we got to thinking, what if we could apply some of the same techniques to the RV? Might not get a, what, 40% increase. Yeah, some of them are getting 30, 40, 50, even 70% higher in fuel mileage. And, but we thought, what if we can only get 10 or 15? Wouldn't that yeah. be worth it? it? When it's $5 a gallon, anything helps. So the goal in hypermiling is constant motion and constant awareness. So with that in mind, let's get on the tips. So the first thing you can do is turn off the AC and leave the windows up. You turn off the AC because AC uses a lot of fuel and you leave the windows up because that pre prevents the drag and we're already a square box going down the road so we don't need the drag at all. I have discovered that if you set your vents to pull the outside air in and not the circulation air that you'll get a little cooler air that way. Yep, and the reports say, depending on how much you use your air conditioning, uh, how hot it is outside, you can increase your gas mileage by between five and 25% by not using an air conditioner. Now, if we're still in Tennessee with 100 degree weather. I guarantee you we'd have that air conditioner on. But that leads us to some of these subcategories as far as air conditioning. We chase 70 degree weather. We're retired, mm -hmm. so we can be in certain places of the country at certain times of the year. So we chase 70 degree weather. Yeah, that really helps as far as not having to run the air conditioner. Yeah, we're in the UP of Michigan, we've been in Wisconsin, so it's been majority of the days in the 70s. Sometimes it went to the 60s yeah. and sometimes it went to the 80s, but I can only think of three days that was in the 80s on yeah. this last 30 days. It's been so. a lot cooler up here, way cooler. We've not had any 100 degrees day. And we had one day that was about 90, and that was one day, and then that night it dropped to 40 something, so it was great. Right. It was great. On top of this, another thing that really helps you if you're having to run your air conditioner is start the day early. You can start your day earlier, get up, get going, get your traveling done earlier, because it's that way you're not on the road at the hottest part of the day. We know the hottest part of the day is about one o'clock, so if you can be done with your traveling by noon, find your place a nice lunch, then get set up in your campground, the last air conditioner you're gonna have to run because it's so much cooler at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning than it is at oh, one, yeah. two, and three in the afternoon. So the next tip is braking and coasting. Timing is everything. We scan further down the road than we have in, ever in the past. Normally you're aware of 100 yards up the road. Now we're scanning down to horizon to see is that light changing? Is it yellow? Is it red? So timing is everything because if you can time your, when you apply those brakes, then you're gonna save a lot more fuel. Right, if it's a stop sign, you have to stop. But if it's a stop light and you see it coming, you can slow down if it looks like it's fixing to turn red in a few minutes. Just slow down and let it turn red and coast up to it. And then if you have to stop, at least you didn't spend fuel getting to the stop. Coast up to it to stop or uh, try to time it so that you can coast from way back until you see it about to turn green and then you can just keep going. You'd much rather 
be, be coasting at 10 miles per hour that turns green and you take off from there versus being at a dead stop with 14,000 pounds or whatever your rig might weigh and trying to take off with that much weight. And I will say this takes some practice. It really does. It takes some practice to kind of get the hang of, you know, and then sometimes you just don't have any luck with it. So you just do your best. You know you're going to stop. We're not saying run stop signs or, or dart through yellows, but. We can't dart through yellows? <laughs> no, I did catch her doing that. <laughs> it's on camera. Oh well. Did it turn red? It didn't turn red. It was on yellow the whole way. I saw it me. I saw it say yellow. Except the camera saw red. <laughs> Not like that time you didn't run that stoplight. I know it. <laughs> I finally got you back. <laughs> Coasting and braking was one of the big things that hypermilers use is knowing how to do that really save you. But the other big thing they use is knowing speed kills. Kills the fuel mileage. It just kills the fuel mileage. So they found through these reports that 45 miles per hour was ideal range to drive to get the best fuel economy. Now you have to be very patient to drive 45 miles an hour to get the best fuel economy. And we realize it does matter where you're at. If you're on the interstate. That's not safe. That's not safe. Don't do that. And, uh, but you've already probably heard in, other, in our previous video where we talked about the sweet spot for RVs are between 60 and 65. Still to this day, we see people driving 75, 80 with rigs that look way too dangerous. But the sweet spot for the best gas mileage on the interstate for an RV is 60 to 65. But if you're in a city, know that if the speed limit's 50 miles per hour, that you're gonna get a little bit better gas mileage at 45. It's okay to go a bit, little bit slower. It's okay to save your gas mileage. You'll get people behind you. And don't let the people behind you push you because I've had that problem in, in trying to test out these things that we heard and read about and everything. And sometimes they'll get right on your bumper and they will think that they can push you. Yeah, we don't mind them going around us. We've had people go around us. You've had yeah. them in your rig, even not doing these hypermiling things. We always want to be safe and, and let people uh, pass us where they can. But And this is where I need to tell you, don't worry about maintaining your 65 miles an hour if you're going up a hill on the interstate. It's okay if you slow down, just get in the right hand lane. If you push that gas pedal all the way to the floor, you're still not gonna maintain, at least not in one of these, your 65 miles an hour. And you're gonna be able to sit there and watch that gas hand go like this. Right. That's a sad feeling. Because what you need to think about is that make it a game between you and your past miles per gallon, between you and yourself. Mm -hmm. If you used to get six miles per gallon, now you're trying to get six and a half or seven. If you used to get seven, now you're trying to get eight. So if you make it a game and not say, all right, there's people behind me, I gotta go, I gotta go. Don't let that happen. So the tip I wanna tell you about is no idling. This is something RVers are absolutely notorious for. We're probably the worst people in the world at idling. We pull up to the dump station, we sit there and idle until we get on up and get ready to dump. And sometimes you leave it idling because you're running the air conditioner if it's hot while you're dumping. When we pull into campgrounds, one jumps out, runs in, the other one sits in the RV. And what do we do? We let it sit there and idle while we're waiting on the other person to come back from the office to tell us where we need to go. We need to take the time to turn the RV off so that you don't lose valuable fuel sitting and doing nothing. And some people think that it takes more gas to turn it off and turn it back on. This is one thing my daughter Amy always tells me. You're wasting gas by turning it off and turning it back on than it does to just let it sit and idle. That's not the case anymore. Don't sit with your RV idling. You'll burn up fuel that you can't afford to burn up right now. And don't forget, all of this works for your tow vehicle as well. So I'm hypermiling. This is a reminder, don't forget that all the same stuff that applies to your RV hypermiling also applies to your tow car or whatever you drive on a regular basis. We have a stick shift and so we're lucky I just took it into neutral and we just, you know, keep going, which really has saved us a lot. Our Honda Fit, 
when we first got it, the fuel mileage was uh, around 39 miles to the gallon. And we have increased that to between 45 and 50, which I think is a pretty good increase. Now that being said, sometimes you need to give yourself a few extra minutes when you take out because although hypermiling doesn't take a lot of time, it takes a little extra time. So just give yourself a few extra minutes and you'll be great. And you'll save money. And when gas is like, up here we have found gas over $5 a gallon. And I know other people are having the same issues everywhere else. Save money where you can. And a couple other tips to remember is always make sure your tire pressure is at the right PSI and always take off smoothly. Because if you gas it when you take off, you're going to lose some valuable miles per gallon. Another tip is, did you know that Google Map now will tell you which is the most fuel efficient route? Yeah, we learned that in the hard way. We went the quick, quick way and it didn't turn out to be quick. It had a lot of curves and turns and hills. hills and, uh, and then we noticed afterwards that one of them had a green leaf on it, which means the most energy efficient route. So it took what it took us a few minutes maybe less than five minutes longer to, to get Go there. that way. Mm -hmm. But it would have been so much better for our fuel efficiency. Right, wouldn't have to climb the hills. And also, I need your help. On the video I'll play in just a minute. Did Lynn go through a yellow light or a red light? So let it's me know what you think. yellow light. Team Lynn. <laughs> Put comments down below what you see. Now for the drum roll as to what you've been waiting for. So, we know you want to know, did we achieve 10, 15% better fuel mileage than we had been getting? We'll pop this worksheet that Lynn's talking about up. Before we started doing this, we had 6.74 miles per gallon in this beast. And that was not good, you know. We, uh, so then, if you'll notice, we had four fill-ups where we've been hyper -miling. And you'll see the gas mileage greatly increased. In fact, the average of those four fill-ups we average an average of 8.71 miles per gallon. Which is way better than we were, and that's a better miles per gallon than our entire last trip that we took in Florida. Florida's a pretty flat state. We improved 1.97 miles per gallon, which might not sound like a lot, but- But you, we'll take it. But when you do the math, that was a 29.2% increase in fuel mileage. So yes, you can hyper mile. Yes, you can improve it. Yes, you gotta be patient, right? Yeah, you gotta be real patient. And you gotta be ultra aware. If you got any questions, put them down below. We'll be glad to answer them. Until next time, God bless and many safe travels. And go RV America.